Join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him. Or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. In this episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will pursue some of the great variety of antelope found in Africa. 84 species of antelope are known in the world, and 72 of them live in Africa. We will start our hunting journey near the east coast of southern Africa, in the country of Mozambique. Our small but well-equipped base camp which was the home of a former commercial buffalo meat hunter, is accessible by single-engine bush plane. Uh, welcome. welcome to Mozambique. From here, we will hunt the fringe bush and the edge of the great Zambezi Delta by 4x4 Toyota vehicle. It's cooling down. Yeah. The hunting season starts here at the beginning of June and ends at the end of November. With the rich variety and large numbers of animals, this promises to be an exceptional and exciting bow hunt with an opportunity to take world records of some species. Our first animals, a common rebuck. Our objective will be to hunt some extremely big trophy animals from the species that are allowed for hunting. We will search for reedbuck, sable, suny, waterbuck, wildebeest, bushbuck, had two species of diker. Our hunting guide, Leo, gave us a sign that he had spotted a potential shooter. He had noticed an exceptionally large red diker moving cautiously among the half meter high tall grass. This extremely valuable hunting trophy, found only near the east coast of Africa, was one of the reasons we were here. So I waited impatiently for Leo's verdict. You know, it's an, it's an opportunity, and, and he would have never turned broadside. He would have kept coming. Mm -hmm. so it, it scared him, so he won't go too far. Yeah. They're huh? tough, they tough little things, but they give him a bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good shooting. That's a nice lucky one for the first day to do. Yeah. Huh? Well done. Our guide was right. Even in my wildest dreams, I never would have thought that our very first animal on the first day of our safari would be the all-time record for this species. I didn't dream of such luck. This species of antelope is found only in limited areas of southeastern Africa. And the relatively small population found in Mozambique, Zambia, and Malawi made our chances to acquire such a trophy very close to zero. So Leo, this is our first half hour hunting and we have an enormous red diker as far as the size of the trophy. And you were saying the size of the horns and his, and, and his ear. Yeah, no, this is an old fighter, you know, you can see how much yeah, they very. And he's got a lot of length too. Yeah, his horn goes way yeah, down here. About an eight, nine year old diker here that we've got Yeah, That's beautiful. And what's interesting of red diker, you see this Roman nose he's got? This develops from, you, you, you familiar with these monkey apples? Those no. round fruits, those hard ones? No. But they headbutt them and crack them. And then they work their horns into the crack. No. And that's how they eat the, the inside of it. In the past, this species was widespread on great territories in Central and South Africa. But the quick expansion of arable land deprived it of its natural habitat. As a result of this, and of unscrupulous poaching, the species became endangered. For the last 10 years, in a well-kept hunting preserve, its population has been restored. And our success today proves this. Take it, and who knows what'll happen for the rest of the hunt, but uh, at least we started off with a, a world record and uh, the new bear attack, uh, bear archery bow. That's for sure the first world record for that bow. So 
we'll see what else we can do for bear arch. During the dry season when rains are rare, the ground layer in the river delta rainforest is covered by dried leaves and grass and it makes great and unavoidable noise with every step of our hunting party. This in many cases limited our hunting zone to the soft, sandy, two-track roads that we used. Our only chance to be in shooting distance of the antelope dwelling in the forest was to slowly and quietly drive the extensive network of bush roads and trails, with multiple sets of eyes searching for trophy males of the species that by chance ventured close to the road. Some, of course, preferred the easier route that the road cutting made by the local people offered to them. We stopped at a small stream to get some water. For more than 50 kilometers around us, there was no other source of water. Water here equates to life for all animal species. After a short rest in a cool, shady grove near the stream, we took to the road again. The vegetation was green and lush around the water source. The animals dwelling in this habitat were therefore here in great numbers. The further we went from the water, the drier and the thinner became the vegetation. In a field of dry bushes, standing in the thin shadow of a lonely tree, we saw a bush buck. It evidently tried to hide from the boiling heat of the African sun. We had to move slowly and silently into shooting distance, an almost impossible task. We chose to approach the animal under the thickly woven branches of a group of trees. This natural cover would allow us to get close enough. Moving ahead slowly, we were surprised by the view that unfolded before us. About 30 meters from the bush buck, in the thick shadow of a young baobab tree, a red diker was standing. Though we were very careful, crawling on all fours among the interwoven branches, the dry leaves were unavoidably noisy, and certainly enough to scare the animals. Our attempt to move noiselessly failed miserably. We had to invent some other way to stalk the animals. I have always said that the simplest solutions are sometimes the most effective ones. We continued on our way by foot. This gave us a better chance to catch by surprise any antelope lurking in the vegetation. I sure hit him. No, no, I know you hit him. The change of tactics brought us luck almost immediately. Really noisy. Really noisy. Yeah, it's fine. Oh. We didn't uh, have to chase him very far. So. But you just look at this stuff and he's shot a little far back, so it's better to spend the other arrow. It's a small animal, but anyway, we have a Sunni, second trophy here. Second trophy with the brand new experimental for me, bear attack. This Sunni is one of the four of the small antelope that are in Mozambique. We're going to hunt three, we hope, and there's a chance that we'll get four. But so far on our safari, we've got two, the Red Diker and the Sunni. I know, but if you just... animal that we sought would provide us with meat for several days. The Civil War and the economic crisis that came after it condemned thousands of people in the region to die from starvation. Mozambique had not yet recovered from this crisis. 
and any meat that the hunters could get was joyfully accepted in the camp. I think that second shot, you must have hit that main artery. Huh? Yeah. Well done. Well, thank you. Two in an hour. Thank you. <laughs> Let me get that tootsie fly off you. It's hacking you dry. Oh, yeah, I got so many tootsie fly bites. Look at all the blood you have, We came down to this burned out meadow and saw a great reed buck way out in the regrowth, in the green grass. We put a stalk on the reed buck and two warthogs came by really close. So we're looking for camp meat and uh, decided if this one came in range, we'd take a shot at him. We switched from our broadheads that we're using for the small game and I happened to have two Fred Bear razor heads. The hunting day ended up with extreme success owing to the timely change of hunting tactics. Beautiful sunset. Mozambique's western sky and another great day of hunting here. Yeah. Just beautiful spot. The next day we hit the road very early in the morning. Today Leo would take us around the areas usually occupied by several herds of sable. It was a long journey and on the way we spotted a few antelope that quickly ran away when we approached them. We've seen all these big herds, Leo, of all these cows and one big herd bull and Finally, we hit a really nice bachelor group here, all bulls, eight or nine or 10, all just black, beautiful. The sable antelope stands 120 to 140 centimeters at the shoulders and weighs 200 to 270 kilograms. This kind of antelope survives the dry season feeding on grass and leaves in the savanna. They form herds of 10 to 30 females along with their young. Each herd has only one male, and this is usually a trophy bull. When the males turn three, they are chased away from the herd by the dominant herd bull. The herd we saw with Leo consisted of males only, and mainly young males. The lone sable, which Leo saw from the tree, was an old animal that was not able to lead the herd. It was condemned to exile, just exactly what we were looking for. The only problem was the dried grass almost a meter and a half tall, and from ground level, you could really only see the top of his horns. Is he? Hit him in the heart. Yeah. We're gonna let this animal have a little time, come back in and see what we have. After half an hour, we started to move cautiously to the exact spot where we had last seen the sable. The antelope's symmetrical horns reached over a meter in length and were a fearful weapon. Attacked by enemies, including lions, this species of antelope is known to thrust these sharp horns into the body of its enemy, inflicting lethal injuries. We did not want to take any risk with this wounded and potentially dangerous animal. Oh my God, he's huge. That's a monster. He's 40 inches. He's at least 40 inches. Isn't that a gorgeous animal? These animals live up to 18 years, and the length and the ribbing of the horns showed that our trophy was very old. Again, we had great luck to acquire such a trophy and to take the ultimate shot. I sat watching calmly the sable herd the joy and satisfaction of taking an exceptional trophy, and now to view the multiple herds of a well-managed species filled me with confidence for the future well-being of these animals. Because there are hunters like me who pay the cosmic prices for hunting trophies, there are people in local governments, people in the bush, and people in the outfitting businesses that all benefit from the sustained use of wildlife and from their conservation and preservation. Yeah, we we here on the floodplain, and um, in the distance we saw a guy carrying something on his head and starting to run when he saw the vehicle. So we approached with a bit of speed, and yeah, it's 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 interesting 
um, we thought it was a fisherman, but he's got a pangolin here. A very, very rare animal. And uh, yeah, shame, man. He's still alive, and uh, what we're going to do is um, <coughs> load him and uh, take him to a secure spot and release him again. Yeah, it's a pity, but uh, yeah, we good deed today that we found this old chap. Boy, he's old, isn't he's he? Got, ow! He calls. That's his tail. He's got his face and everything. Yeah. It's actually a scaly ant eater, pangolin. Yes. Oh. Buana Mganga, the healer of the forest, what the Africans called a prehistoric creature that today has almost disappeared. The legends of the healing qualities of the pangolin were the cause of its almost complete extermination. There are some documented stories of commercial ships sailing from here to China loaded with tons of pangolin meat. The mission of the ultimate shot is to show you some exceptional skills in shooting, big trophies, and the unforgettable moments in hunting. But our main purpose is to show you how you as hunters, united together, can change the exploitation of nature by man. That's why we support Safari Club International. SCI is number one for hunters. A little later, as if rewarding us for the freed pangolin, our luck brought us to the end of a field covered by tall, dry grass. On the other side of the field, there were some tufts overgrown with papyrus and a bushbuck was calmly grazing among them, totally oblivious to our presence. This time, the noise we made while sneaking through the dry grass was muffled by the strong wind. For much of the distance we crawled, first on our hands and knees, and then on our stomach. We managed to get in bow range of the unsuspecting animal. I drew my bow, made the necessary corrections to account for the strong wind, and I released the arrow. The distance to the bushbuck was not far, but despite that, I did not hear the characteristic sound of the broadhead's contact with the bushbuck's body. The strong wind had muffled it, but I was sure that it was a deadly hit. Right away, he showed signs of being hit, but since it is a cardinal rule, we just had to give it time. one of your spiral horns, so yeah, that's, that's what a lot of hunters have been killed by bushbuck before. There have? Oh, yeah. Especially if you've got a hound that you put on a wounded bush buck, he's got to know what he's doing. The hound? Yeah. 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 Carefully, cautiously, and slowly, we started walking in the direction which the wounded bush buck had taken. None of us wanted to confirm the local people's superstitions and fears of the dangers of a charging bush buck's lethal horns. We examined every suspicious leaf of grass, near and far, and then Leo spotted the dead animal. Well, the sun's setting on our long day in this heat and driving, looking for elephants. And this is the second great trophy today here in Mozambique. This, this is a great animal, a great species. You have to be very respective of them. They're dangerous if they're wounded. They've killed a lot of people. You can see with these spiral horns, they're sharp as a knife. We switched bows. We're back with our 80 pound bear attack bare bow and still shooting the Crush Trophy Ridge arrows and the Fred Bear Razor head. On, the On leaving, our guide Leo took the necessary initiative for this territory, rich in game, so that there would be fresh grass again for the animals in the rainy season. The burning of old dry grass provided natural compost and made some room for the new plants that would grow after the pouring rains. Thus, there would be enough food for the multiple herds of antelope in the next year. And if there's enough game here, the hunters will come and provide the future for the wildlife and the local people. Yeah. And Leo, it was an uh, awfully successful safari. Day one, world, yeah. world record uh, red diker. First, and, first 30 minutes. And, and for, <laughs> day 14, uh, the last hour, uh, a world record Sunni. Livingston Sunni. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, a beautiful closure of this hunt. Isn't and it? Uh, from my side again, Archie, well done. And yeah, it's a it's a bow hunter's dream. That's what it is.
While I was watching our plane flying away from this wild animal's paradise, I promised myself that someday I would return here to once again feel that unique thrill of being in the famous Zambezi Delta while seeking the ultimate shot. In the next episode of The Ultimate Shot, we will take you with us as we hunt the Northern Hemisphere's most dangerous carnivores. You will be with us as we grizzly bear hunt in the wilds of the Yukon amidst settlements abandoned by placer gold miners during the gold rush. You will witness the deadly shot where I, Archie Nesbitt, managed to take down a huge 700 kilogram brown bear in less than a minute below the shadow of an active volcano on the one and only Alaska Peninsula. Then we are off to another continent, where you will see firsthand the dangerous cohabitation of humans and brown bears in Eastern Europe. And then a hunt for a man-eater bear in Bulgaria. Be there for the next Ultimate Shot.